Why a second referendum on Brexit then? Or actually, should I say, how on earth can somebody asking for a second referendum on Brexit expect to win the Tory leadership race? No, you're right. Look, I am the underdog's underdog in this race, but I think it also gives me permission to be bolder. Parliament is deadlocked. We've lost the fourth Conservative Prime Minister over the issue of Europe. Uh, no deal uh, is what a number of the other candidates are clustering around, or a reheated version of Theresa May's deal, which will not pass the House of Commons. So we've got to find a way to break the deadlock. We've got to find a way to bring the country together and to move on from Brexit. And in that context, I think a new referendum with a new set of questions is a credible path to move forward. So your question is essentially how do you get that through the Conservative Party, which is um, not much in favour of this. But the facts of the matter is front runners can say whatever they like to members in order to get their votes. But when they come back into the House of Commons, they would face the exact same problems that Theresa May faces, unless they're willing to change the game. So and is that is this, what I'm advocating. And Ian Duncan Smith and others within the Tory party have said, look, there's far too many people standing in this contest. You're the 13th to throw your hat into the ring. Is this just a, a way of trying to secure a cabinet role, uh, to, to try and balance out a, a very Brexit-heavy cabinet in the future? Sam, what, what's your no, real look, game here? I resigned on principle, <laughs> so I'm not a... I'm, I, 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 and I've said I'll find it very difficult to serve in a no deal cabinet. But we've got to face up to the reality of Brexit. And the Conservative Party has got to th think about the country, not just what it wants. We are a minority government. And in order to deliver for the country, which is what conservatism is about, we've got to look at options that are beyond our comfort zone. Otherwise, Brexit will continue to be a problem for us and for the country. Matt. And that is why I am standing. Matt. Well, I mean, Sam, look, you're an incredibly intelligent man, president of Oxford Union, worked for Goldman Sachs, started your own firm in the city. Um, clearly, no one in the Tory party is going to win saying that he wants to hold or she wants to hold another referendum. So what is it exactly that you gain by running? Well, I think that leadership is not just about winning the popularity contest. Leadership is sometimes taking an unpopular issue and forcing it onto the agenda, making people think about it. We are talking about this today because I've entered the race. If I hadn't entered the race, this would not be on the agenda, and it would all be about either unicorn versions of Brexit or fudge versions of Theresa May's deal that will not happen. It is surprising. No, it's we're where we are, not because people didn't try, right? Most of the frontrunners have been in Theresa May's cabinet, they've been part of the negotiations, they know what the constraints are, but they're still saying that somehow they're going to get a better deal than she did. So what's my game? My game is to make sure that we face up to the reality of the situation and we deliver for the country at a time that we are in a crossroads. Okay. Of course, I want to do as well as I can, but if I don't win, at least I'd have forced it onto the agenda. Could you see yourself getting into the final two, being then put to the members of the party? Do you, do, are there, are there, uh, do you have big backers within the Tory party? Others who were of a more Remain persuasion originally uh, might see you as someone they could go for? Well, the truth, the, tr the choice is actually no deal or a second referendum. All the soft Brexit options are dead, although people are still flirting with them. So the job I have to do over the next week and a half or so is to make people very aware of what the stark choice we're going to face in Parliament is, and I am their candidate. I don't have, as much, don't have that much time to do it, given I've, the mm. time I've declared, but I declared because I sat there in frustration watching a leadership race that wasn't really addressing the issues from my perspective. How do you take on the threat of the Brexit party and Farage, though? Because some of the polls over the weekend suggest that they, on a percentage basis, which isn't how the House operates, of course, but on a percentage basis, some polls put them ahead, put them in the lead. The way to see of Nigel Farage, as we have done before when he was a leader of UKIP, is to actually fight a traditional conservative, broad-based a campaign based on aspiration and all the things that conservatives are known for being pro-business. Not to uh, move for, into his turf. For example, not to embrace Farage. We won in 2015 our first majority in 25 years by fighting on aspiration, the economy, being pro-business and well invested in public services. We cannot become a one-issue party if we want to be a national party.